Now we're going to talk a little bit about exponents. Exponents have to do with multiplication and division, and I do want to talk about just what they are first. So really, just like how multiplication was repeated addition, exponentials or exponents are repeated multiplication. So let's say I have two counting numbers or natural numbers, A and B, and you can deal with uh, zero separately. There are separate rules in some sense when it comes to zero, so we'll deal with them in a second. But if we have the um, notation A to the power of B, with B up here as a superscript, well, that just means take A and multiply it by itself B times. And the names for these things, A here is called the base and b is called the exponent, or you might see the word power as well. Now, there's a couple of notes here. So if I have an exponent of 1 for any number you like, even, as, even 0, so a could be 0 in this case, anything to the power 1 is just that number itself. So that's all that means. So if you ever write down a number, it's assumed to have exponent 1. When something has exponent 0, well, we say that it's 1. And I'll show you why that makes sense in a second once we talk about rules for exponents, why this is a really good way of deciding what a number to the power of 0 should be. 0 to any power that you like, to any counting number power, well, that's just going to be zero. Take zero, multiply it by itself however many times you like, you're still going to get zero. The only weird thing is what if you have zero to the power of zero? Because this rule is kind of saying, well, anything to the power of zero is one, but this rule is saying, well, zero to any power is zero. So what should it be? And I'm not going to get into too many details here, but, um, you can kind of use some ideas from calculus to show that, in essence, you can make 0 to the power of 0 equal anything you like. So we just say that 0 to the power of 0 is an undefined um, quantity. If we ever see this, it just doesn't have any meaning. So let's just do a little example here. So if I have 3 minus 1 to the 5 minus 2, well, Let's simplify this. We'll simplify inside our brackets first using order of operations. So this is 2 to the 5 minus 2. And even though there are no brackets in the exponent, it's assumed that anything in your exponent just kind of brackets around it. So 2 to the 5 minus 2 is, of course, 2 to the 3, since 5 minus 2 is 3. Oh, 2 to the 3. And this is just 2 times 2 times 2, 2 multiplied by itself 3 times, which is, of course, 8. All right, so there's basically four different exponential rules to help us simplify expressions with exponents. So let's look at them. The first one basically says that if two numbers have the same base, and different exponents, and you multiply them, then you just add the exponents. And the reason that works, it's not um, anything particularly complicated, just thinking about what an exponent means. Well, if we have a to the power of b, that means take a, multiply by itself, b times. So we write that out, a times a times a all the way here, b times. And then we want to multiply that by a multiplied by itself, c times. So we have these multiplied together, but remember, multiplication is an operation that's associative, so it doesn't matter how it's grouped. We don't need brackets around these things. So how many a's do I have multiplied together? Well, I have these b and then these c, so I have b plus c a's multiplied together. So how do I write that? Well, that's just a to the b plus c. Well, the second rule, well, what if we have a times b, a product of two numbers to the power of c? Well, 
we can simplify that a little bit. So here we have a times b times a times b times a times b, c times. So there's little brackets around these things, if you like, if you want to picture it that way. Again, multiplication is associative. You don't need to put it in. And I do want to make the point, I've uh, on purpose used different notation for multiplication kind of throughout, just so you get used to the various ways of writing multiplication. So you can see two numbers multiplied with a time symbol. You can see it with no symbol at all, or you could see it with a dot. Those all mean multiplication. Anyway, so we have this AB multiplied by itself, C times. But remember, multiplication is commutative. So we can arrange things however we like. So let's commute all of the A's to the left and all of the B's to the right. Well, if we have C copies of AB, well, there's C copies of A in there. So we're going to move those C A's all to the left. Here they are. And those C B's, here they are here, we're going to move them all to the right. But what is this? This is A multiplied by itself C times A to the C. And this is B multiplied by itself C times B to the C. All right. The third rule says, well, if we have um, a power to another power like this, what does that mean? Well, that means you multiply the exponents. And again, there's no magic here. All that's going on is you're just counting the number of a's that you're multiplying together. So here we have a to the b to the power of c, which means take a to the b and multiply it by itself c times. Okay, we can do that. But remember, a to the b is a multiplied by itself b times. So each one of these has b copies of a. So we have b a's multiplied c times. So how many a's do we have multiplied together? Well, it's going to be b times c. So we have a multiplied by itself b times c times. So when you have an exponent like this to the uh, to another exponent, you just multiply those exponents. And finally, if we have a division problem, if we have a to the b divided by a to the c, well, we just subtract the exponents, a to the b minus c. And for now, I'm going to say where b is greater than or equal to c so we can avoid negative exponents, but we will talk about negative exponents in the near future. But just for now, because I don't want to get into fractions, because it does have a lot to do with fractions, we're going to avoid that. So we're just going to say b is the larger number. And all that's going on here is if we have b copies of a divided by c copies of a, well, we can just cancel out any copies of A that match. And in fact, for every C here, there's going to be a copy of A that we can cancel out. But since B is bigger than C, or bigger than or equal to, there might be some that didn't get canceled out. So in that case, those remaining ones, that's how many A's there are. So it's B minus C A's all multiplied together. They're the ones that remain up here. Let's do an example with these rules just to see how they're used. All right, let's look at this example. So this is going to cover basically all of our rules, which is great. So we have this expression here, 2 cubed to the power of 2, so 2 cubed squared, times 5 squared, times 6 to the 4, and then divided by 3. So we have all of these things multiplied together, and then we're dividing by 3. No problem. Okay. So I want to simplify this as much as possible. The first thing I note is that, hey, 6 
I can write here, 6 is 2 times 3. So let me write 6 as 2 times 3, so that I can combine the 2s and the 3s as much as possible. So this is going to be 2 cubed squared times 5 squared times 2 times 3 to the power 4 divided by 3. Okay. Now, let's use our rules for exponents to help us out here. So here I have 2 to a power all to another power. So if you remember here, we just multiply exponents. So we're going to have 2 to the 3 times 2, which is 2 to the 6. So that's the first guy. The second guy, there's not too much there, just 5 squared. And then we have a product to an exponent. So what I can do is take that exponent and put it on each of the factors of my product. So this is 2 to the 4 times 3 to the 4, and then divided by 3. And I'm thinking of 3. Whenever I see a number like that with no exponent, I'm thinking of it as 3 to the 1. Even if I don't write that 1, I'm thinking that every number has an exponent, and if it's not shown, that exponent is 1. Okay, so looking here, now I have to use my rules for uh, multiplying and dividing numbers that have the same base. So I have 2 to the 6 and 2 to the 4 here. There's only one 5, so we don't do anything with that. That's just along for the ride. And we have 3 to the 4 and 3 to the 1. Now I'm going to do an extra step here. I'm going to use the commutative property of multiplication to move my 2's together just to see it a little bit better. So 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 4. And I'll move my 3's together too. We'll have it in numerical order. 3 to the 4 divided by 3 to the 1 times 5 squared. And I do want to make a note here. Remember, in order of operations, multiplication and division happen at the same time. So when I write these, I'm still doing it right to left. So it's 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 4 times 3 to the 4 divided by 3 times 5 squared. I'm not putting brackets around this in my head and figuring out what this is and dividing by that. It just happens left to right. OK. So let's go ahead again. Multiplication is associative, so I can group these however I like. I'm going to group it like that, so I can apply rule number 1 here. So I have 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 4, so 6 2's multiplied together, and then multiplied by 4 2's multiplied together. So that is, of course, 2 to the 6 plus 4, and then this is 3 to the, well, we're dividing, so we're going to subtract 4 minus 1. And now we have just the 5 squared here. So this simplifies to, well, 2 to the 6 plus 4 is 2 to the 10. And 3 to the 4 minus 1, well, that's 3 to the power of 3. And we just have 5 squared. So we've simplified that as much as we can in terms of breaking things down into their prime factors and combining all prime factors together.